Hello, Nuggets. It's been ages. Yeah, I stopped doing them for a while. Uh, I got a little bored. No, actually, what happened was uh, Laura took my mic away. And um, that just kind of uh, stopped me doing it on that one day. And then I forgot to get it back from her. And so on the second day, I noticed it. And I'm a lazy bastard. So I noticed the mic was gone. And I'm like, eh, fuck it. I'll do it. And then that just continued, which is very much an indication of who I am as a person, which is something I would like to fix before I die. That um, I'm so lazy. <laughs> I'm not when I'm into a zone, when I'm into a project and when I'm being paid to work and stuff like that, I'm not lazy. But in the moment, every decision to do something that requires even a, like the tiniest amount of energy is a struggle. Maybe that's normal. I don't know. But maybe it's just because I'm a fat bastard. I don't know. But it's it's frustrating so i didn't have the mic i would have had to get up and walk like i don't know 20 feet a good 20 feet maybe 25 actually you know um depending on the route and then um get the mic and i just couldn't be bothered anyway so that's why i haven't done one for a while because <laughs> the mic was in a different room no i just couldn't be bothered i got out of it a little bit um well uh depressed uh same as everyone else on the planet this year what the fucking year this has been oh my god what a nightmare <laughs> it's the weirdest year man this is the weirdest year wow so we got the election coming up um i volunteered to be uh to help out um because i figured like you know this year i'm not proactive on stuff you know i complain about stuff i'm not a big whiner but i'll have an opinion on stuff but I don't actually do anything, you know. I don't actually help, or I, I'm not involved in things. My world is tiny. It's my wife, <laughs> and that's it, and a couple of friends, and I don't really see them either. I'm just like, you know, I'm just disappearing into myself. I wish that were true. You know what I mean. Um, so I figured this year, you know what, um, maybe I'll volunteer to work on the election. So I did. I can't remember where I got the number. I saw it somewhere. Anyway, volunteered to help out. I had a phone interview where they said, this is what it pays. It's $100 for a day for like 10 hours work. So, but whatever. What else am I going to do? Um, $100 for the day. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm not, I'm not in for the money. <laughs> I'm really not in this business for the money, love, I said. Um, she asked if I was a citizen, citizen twice. I wonder if that's to do with my accent. Which I've noticed as soon as I started recording this video got more East End. I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I was brought up in the East End, but uh, I haven't had an East End accent for a year. But now, years, suddenly it's coming out. Anyway, I don't know. Um, but anyway, asked me if I was a citizen twice. I said yes, uh, despite the accent. And then a couple of questions. Um, they don't ask you if you're affiliated with any party. I'm not, um, but if they don't ask that. Um, they ask how far you're willing to travel. Um, and I said, uh, whatever distance, although I'd prefer to keep it to five miles. Although she was just filling in a form. The woman who interviewed me was filling in a form. So I'd be very surprised if it has like a big text entry field where they can put, well, he said he would like to do five miles, but he's willing to go to 25. But if we could work really hard to keep it five miles. So she probably just checked the box that said 25 miles or more. So it could be a drive. Um, the thing is that the elections in four weeks, I haven't heard anything and you have to get trained. So I'm assuming they're not going to pick me. And it got me thinking, I wonder what the stipulation is. Like, is the fact that I'm not affiliated with a party, is that good or bad? Because on the face of it, God, this camera's wobbling a lot. On the face of it, you would think that not being affiliated with a party would be a bonus to work the election, Right. But actually, everyone who has an agenda about who they want to see win, and this year it's particularly important because every side is fighting each other, but anyone who had an agenda who said, I want to see this side win, the best background information they can have is no party, right? Because if it says they're Democrat or it says they're Republican, then, I mean, they're going to be suspect, aren't they, if anything goes on, you know? 
So I wondered if me not having a party actually wasn't a benefit. And what they do when they hire people is they look for, okay, let's get 50% registered Democrat, 50% registered Republican. I don't, I don't know, I'm just making that shit up. But I don't know, so I didn't get a call when I kind of thought I would because I didn't think there'd be a lot of people volunteering. But as soon as I just said that, right now I realized, yeah, there's probably a ton of people volunteering because everyone thinks this thing is going to be a sham, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's a nightmare. I'm posting this on Monday, which is like, and, and um, Trump has just got the coronavirus and maybe getting released today. I don't know. It's hard. As much as I don't want to watch this shit anymore, um, I can't stop watching it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't turn it off. I check every morning. Maybe I need to stop that. I check to see, like, you know, oh, what's happened now? What's he done now? Or what have the Democrats done now? Who's fighting who? Who are the Proud Boys now? Are they racist? Are they not racist? Why are they black people if they're racist? Are they really black people? Like, it's fucking ridiculous, man. You just go down that rabbit hole and realize it is almost impossible to get the truth. It's impossible. There's just no such thing as an unbiased news source. And I have searched, man. We watch NPR a lot here um, at home because we love uh, the, the anchor, Judy Woodruff. She's very, she's great. You know, like the whole show's great. It's always got interesting stories. It's very in-depth reporting. Um, it's just a fantastic news source, right? And I trust it a lot. I really do think it's a very balanced news source. But it's biased, <laughs> It's definitely left-wing, left-leaning, shall we say. Or maybe it's not all the time. It's anti-Trump, shall we say. Although they don't come out and say it, but you can tell by the demeanor of the people on that show that, um, you know, like there's often disappointment. With, and the president once again did this thing, which I think is natural considering our president, but, you know, he's going to disappoint a lot of people. But they seem to show that in the show. And they have this thing on Friday where they have the analysis of these two fantastic guys, uh, Brooks and Shields, um, and they're both Democrats. Um, which one? David Brooks is less Democrat. One of them is less, um, is works for the New York Times, is slightly less Democrat than the other one, um, who's a bit of a shill. I love him, but he's a bit of a shill. But um, that kind of me, to me shows that NPR is a little bit biased. You know, I mean, it's clearly they are, you know. But I don't know what else to do, because if I go on the BBC, the BBC is biased. I love the BBC too. But the BBC is definitely left-leaning. You know, I think it leans with the country in general. But, you know, I have a link to Reuters. I try Reuters. But, you know, I think one of the things I realized that as hard as it is to get unbiased spread, and I read Fox as well. I look at Fox sometimes as well. Um, and I, the last couple of years have changed my opinion on Fox, actually. They're not quite as bad as you thought, think they are. The television is. Put, don't do Fox television. It's awful. But if you read some of the reports, they report stuff okay. They're biased, but so is the left. So is the left, you know. The problem is that, you know, a lot of the assumptions that they make, I feel, are just awful, Fox. They're just not correct. I'm not talking about Fox television. just want to be clear. If you go on the website and read Fox News... In theory, that should be the same, right? But it's clearly not. If you watch Fox News television, it's junk. It's absolute junk. So is CNN, but CNN tends to lean more towards my thinking, so maybe I'm a bit more blind, blind to it. But Fox is just trash TV, man. It is fucking trash TV. They'll do whatever they want, whatever they can to get you riled up. That's what they want. Get you angry, get you riled up, get you fearing. Just like, you know, most governments. Um, anyway, how did I get onto that? Oh, yeah, finding an unbiased news source. So I tried everything. So I've, I've got like a link to Reuters, Associated Press, Al Jazeera I tried. I've tried all of these different things. But actually, I realized there's no such thing as an unbiased piece of reporting. Because in the case of someone like Trump, who is so hated <laughs> worldwide, I mean, he is. He's despised. Of course, there's people who like him. But in general, he's despised worldwide. He's a prick. He's an arrogant bastard. Whether you like his policies or not, he's just, a, he's just an ugly human being, right? He's just the kind of person you're like, if you brought him home and he was dating your daughter, you'd be like, oh, fuck, well, at least she's going to be rich. Uh, or at least she's going to 
you know, he's going to pretend to be rich. Um, he's just an ugly person. So therefore, it's very hard for any press outlet to not have an opinion on that. Because sometimes shitty people do shitty things and you just have to report that it's shitty. I don't know. I realized I don't know what the unbiased version of that is, whether you're left or right, you know. I don't know. I know I've been seeing pictures of Obama and I had a lot of problems with Obama's presidency. I think he did a lot of things wrong. Um, and George W. Bush and Reagan and seeing all of these presidents before and just make, wanting to cry. Just like, Jesus Christ, what happened to the dignity of the role? Why is it that I can't trust anything that's said? You know, and I think this comes across as anti-Trump. And it's really not. I mean, much as I have a feeling about it, it's not. It's just anti-bullshit. Just so much of it. I want to go back to the old bullshit. When we knew they were lying to us. But they were kind of pretending not to. <laughs> now they didn't give a shit about that. We'll just say whatever we want. Anyway, he's coming out of the hospital. Maybe. Who knows? He does have it. He doesn't have it. Uh, it's really bad, but it's not bad. It's it's not bad. His symptoms are not bad in the bad spectrum of not bad sp symptoms. Does that make sense? Okay. And now Kayla McKenney, um has got it too. Uh, she's very pretty, isn't she? I noticed that. It's very difficult for left people, that. Um, all right. So anyway, I'm back. I think I'm going to try this again. Yeah, I miss reaching out. I miss socializing. I fucking hate Facebook. I hate social media. I know this is social media. Is it? Is YouTube social media? I don't know if it counts. This is what I'm doing right now as media. But is it social? Because I don't have to listen to any of your shit. And you don't have to listen to mine. You can turn it off. What should we call this? The, the six monthly ramble. That's what we'll call this video. Um, but I think I'm going to give it another go because I need to start communicating. I'm getting depressed again. It's a fucking boring story hearing me say that, but I'm getting depressed. I'm gaining crazy weight, uh, not feeling good. So I need to kind of kick my shit back into gear. And last time I did this, it was actually healthy for me. I kind of initiated some changes. There have some, been some good things. So I vape. I don't know if you know that I used to vape. I used to smoke like five years ago. I've been using this for five years. We've cut down now to the next order I make of the juice will be three milligrams of nicotine, which is almost none, right? So we went from 18 milligrams, which is a lot. And when you smoke this, no matter what anyone tells you, it does help you quit smoking. If they say it doesn't, bullshit. It does. I know so many people. However, you get more addicted to nicotine because this thing's here and you're just puffing on it all the day. So I was on 18 milligrams and now I've moved Laura and I down to three milligrams. Wait, no, we're on six. We're about to order a new batch. That will be three milligrams. Hopefully, end of the year, we'll be quitting completely. Um, maybe we'll be quitting because the entire world will be on fire post-November, January, whenever it gets sorted out. January 2025, <laughs> whatever it is. All right, so I'm back. I might do a YouTube channel on a, a playlist on some games. Or on Blender. I need to do a video on Blender. I just started using Blender, a piece of 3D software. I know most of you know what that is. If you know me, you know if you're in my world. But for those who don't, Blender is a piece of 3D software, which I have tried five or six times before and hated it every time. And I was impressed. It's free. I'm like, eh, it's good for you. Look at you doing charity. Now, it's amazing. If you haven't used it in a while, 2.8 onwards, I think they're at 2.9 now, is like industry changing to me. Like put Maya right next to Blender. Maya doesn't stand a chance, man. I'm sure there's in-depth stuff that I don't know about because I'm a total layman with it that I don't know about. But I picked up Blender. I spent three or four hours being annoyed with it. And since then, just like, oh my God, what a piece of software. This is incredible. Anyway, maybe I'll do a video on that. All right, you little nuggets. I'll see you soon.